Hey, what's going on guys? It's the governor at Renegade Racing. So today we caught up with Kyle Loftus. He is the man behind 1320. And I remember, I met this guy way back in World Cup Finals, way back in the day before 1320 was even this big. You know what I mean? I mean, it was heard of, but it wasn't a 3 million plus subscribe channel. You know what I mean? And it was, it's, it's just become absolutely wild. So we've met up with him today and we want to know how did you do this? What were the struggles? And then we want to kind of go to, I know y'all are tearing down right now. It's after hours at streetcar takeover, but we want to know what it's taken, how you how you have your thing set up, the YouTube channel, everything about it. What has it taken you to do this? Uh, well, it was a very slow start. I started right. 1320 in college basically in 03. Uh, I started, well, before that, I started taking pictures and videos of the stereo competitions when I was in college, and then I graduated into street racing. That was just kind of the progression. Um, I was using a little point and shoot camera, like a $200 camera from Best Buy. Exactly. And I would shoot street racing videos that were like, you know, 200 and some pixels wide. Right. And host them on my server, share it with my friends before their social media. And then they were pushing me to take more videos. And go out and get a nicer camera. We actually had a fundraiser back in 02, 03 to help, we had a car wash that my friends helped put together get to Kyle raise a camera. money to get me a camera. Half of it we went, went to um, Red Cross, local Red Cross. Half of it we went to going to get a camera. Right. So then I started getting some pretty serious street racing videos and then, and it was Maybe. tough because back then you had to actually host the videos yourself. Right. Uh, there was no Street Fire, YouTube, or Facebook or anything like that. Right. So I was paying money for people to download the videos and I wasn't making any money. Right. So then that progressed into doing a DVD <clears throat> and posting the videos on my website to bring people in to buy the DVDs. Right. And then um, fast forwarding to when social media started becoming a thing, MySpace and then Facebook, that just really blew things up. It was just been my obsession to go out and find the coolest things I could and share with me, as many people as I could. Right, right. So, it's weird. so, so it, like, in, in my area, so I'm, I'm a mechanic, you know, I do reefer work and stuff like that. So what were you doing to supplement your income before all this took yeah. off? Because I know this is all you do now. This is your bread and yeah, butter. Sure. So before then, what was it? Hey, I, I can't just, I'm making no money. I'm selling DVDs here and there. Where, where did the money come from? How did you support yourself? Uh, I actually graduated in 05, got a job at PayPal, and I was there for almost 10 years. All right. Up until 2015, I think, is when I left and did 1320 full time. But I loved the job there. Gotcha. I was helping enterprise 500 companies, Fortune 500 companies, set up PayPal on their website, working with their tech teams. Um, it was a really fun job. Right. So it was tough to leave, but I couldn't do both. Right. And so I had to choose one. But at, at that time, you know, when you were doing both, you know, what was. Uh, how hard was it for you to get away from, hey, I'm, I'm at PayPal, I'm doing this during the week, and yeah. then I'm flying to Australia, you know, over the weekend, and I'm filming over there. You know, how hard was that? What was your schedule like? Was it just... I, like back 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 back. I, was, I was lucky enough, in the last, like, six to seven years, I had a work-from-home job or work-from-office and home and right. travel for PayPal. Um, so sometimes I would travel from PayPal and go film a street race in that city and then come back home. Uh, but anytime we go to a race on like a Thursday or Friday, I could work in the car, right. in the passenger seat while the guys are driving us there. Right. Put in my like four to seven hours or whatever it was. And on the way home after the race, I'd be working on the way home too. So right. I was very lucky that they let me do that. And every every job, every every manager I had knew what I did. I was like, I'm street racing, I travel a lot. So if you be flexible with me, just to make it work. All right. So, yeah, very yeah. lucky to be able to do that. You can't do that with many jobs. No, and, and you know, a lot of people ask me the same thing. They're like, "How do you, how do you do, how do you go to work every day during the week and then you take off?" And and, and I kind of got lucky. You know, I own my own business. You know, so I can kind of leave. But at the same time, when I come back Monday, like Monday, I'm gonna be slapped in the head like a brick. Oh, you know, man. it's it's gonna be rough. So it, it's it's. Right now, I'm kind of prioritizing, but my goal is exactly to do what you do. You know, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of in between all kinds of things. I kind of want to be a public figure like Garrett, you know, and then, you know, also film street racing and, and do tutorials and all kinds of stuff. So I'm kind of just incorporating everything into my YouTube page. But 
you know, coming up, you know, uh, and, and like I said, I, I, we talked about this a little bit earlier, like you were an inspiration for me, you know, back when we first met, especially when you first filmed this event, you know, and I, it, it, it just went crazy, you know, and it's like, man, I had a lot of people, not just you, pushing me saying, hey, you should really do that, you know, and I'm just like, I don't even know where to begin. You know, it was and one of those anomaly videos that actually worked without the car even running, making right. it pass. You know, it was just something unique. Yeah, it's it, hard it, to it find was, that anymore. Crazy. Like we, we, we used to be able to go to these races that no one ever heard of, find these cars that no one had ever heard of. Right. And that was what really drove me. And it's really hard anymore because someone can take a photo with their personal on their personal Facebook and that goes viral now. Right, right. So everybody knows everything online. Exactly. So it's been a lot more difficult lately. So yeah, it's to it, it's, it's, it's really hard. hard. You know, and, and the thing that I've been doing, and, and what, what we did at LS Fest, is I was like, all right, so the bigger companies are going to get views right away. So if I can put something out tonight, you know, we're going to stay up all day, film, race cars, and then we're going to stay up all night and edit and then post the video at like 3 in the morning. So, and then maybe sleep an hour or two and then do it all again. And then maybe we can kind of jump in front of people before our views slow down. So that's kind of been my motivation. It's been working a little bit, but it's been a struggle, man. But, you know, this is, and that's what hands down to you because what you're doing is absolutely amazing. You know, and, and even today, you know, just like you said, seeing cars that, you know, somebody will snap a picture of and stuff of that nature. But, you know, there's every time I look at 1320 video, I'm seeing something that's just absolutely amazing. You know, especially one of the biggest things I like is when you go overseas, Australia and stuff like that. I'm just like, wow. I do too, because everything's new. Yeah. No one here has seen a lot of that stuff. Exactly. I, I hope we can get back to normal international travel soon. Right. There's a few countries you can go to, but it's just weird right now. Gotcha. I'm anxious for that. Gotcha, gotcha. So let's talk about the trailer, man. So how does all this work and, and what do you do with it? Uh, so right now manages the overall merchandise operations. Gotcha. And Alex helps out with traveling to shows and in the warehouse. And then we have a, a warehouse manager, Brandon, who's back home shipping out orders that are still coming in over the weekend. Gotcha. So we ship everything the next day. Right. Um, I just like having the best customer service out there, but right, uh, absolutely. we've had this trailer for I think six or seven years. Gotcha. Um, we cram a lot of merchandise in here. Right. It's always impossible to figure out what exactly you're going to need. Exactly. Um, based on weather or whatever, but uh, we've got about 200,000 miles on this trailer. Right. Since we bought it in like 16, 15. Gotcha. We used to go to like we used to go to like 25 to 35 events a year. Now we're more like. 10 to 12 just because it's so expensive to travel. Right. We've been pushing to make our online sales work better just so we can right, relax right. a little bit more because I like to have my employees have a little bit of life. Right. So 30 to 40 events a, week, a year is pretty, right. pretty hectic. So. Now, one of, the, one of the big questions that I had is do your employees, are, are y'all all from Nebraska? Yeah. Or so everybody's from Nebraska? Because yeah, I was wondering all. maybe, because some vendors, they'll pick up guys like they go to a show, they'll pick up some laborers we have down there. Friends here and like there, that. they'll jump in. Um, but yeah, we think of in Kansas. Gotcha. Um, and he's going to have a new job in a couple weeks, but he's just like, I just want to come hang out. All right, absolutely. And that's how 1320 started. It's just a group of friends that all like partying at the racetrack or on the streets or just hanging out. Right. That's just kind of the way it's always been. Man, it's absolutely amazing, especially seeing how it's just came up over so long, man. It's just. Uh, it, 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 I, I mean, like, you're an inspiration to me, and that's why I just decided, all right, man. You know, Kyle once told me, he said, uh, dude, you should do this. You're a character. Yeah. And I was like, all right, here we go. <laughs> How else does a video get 7 million views of a car that doesn't even run? Exactly. Right? <laughs> Good Lord. And, and, you know, nowadays I can't even keep it running. I break it. Yeah. Every other time I take it out. So. Yeah, yeah. Definitely a struggle. So uh, what's the plans for the future? I know we got this uh, EPA thing going on. Um, and uh, what kind of what kind of curve are you going to take to try and go around all this and still keep the company afloat? Uh -huh. you all know, that we're stuff. Just waiting to see what happens. Right. I, there's so many things I've wanted to get involved in with with the Clean Air Act, the EPA, and all that stuff. It's so hard to figure out the facts because there's so much weird stuff going on right now. Right. Um, a lot of it's it's really tough. But we're we're just kind of waiting to see what happens. Right. We've been talking to a big a few of the big players, congressmen, stuff like that behind the scenes to see what's actually going on right because it's just you know because everybody's scared right now man know. you know uh and in the diesel world that's what i mean i i did some deletions of like uh you know dpf systems and stuff like that and i actually ended up getting fined you know and yeah. not even knowing 
you know, what I was doing was wrong, you know what I mean? And it, this was like right when this stuff started to pick up, and I'm just like surprised, like, whoa, yeah. what, what's happening? And now it's like a, unheard of these days. It's still going on, but everything's getting stricter and stricter and stricter. Oh, Fines sure. are being passed out. It's, uh, the, the RPM Act is great and all, but to protect what we do, right. there's nothing out there right now. So we're trying to network with some people and see what we can do, right. bigger picture-wise, to protect more than just streetcar racing, drag racing. There's a lot of industries that are going to be affected by it. So. Right, yeah, everything, man. Yeah. Especially, and not only that, man, uh, what about this COVID? Has that has that hurt 1320 at all? Or? Not really. It slowed us down for a few months, but we went out street racing and right. had some fun. You know, it was, it was a big unknown for everybody, so we were at home for a couple months. Gotcha. But it's, yeah. uh, business is still good. Well, that's awesome, Still, still paying, paying my guys. That's the most important thing. It, it was very scary, you know, looking at nine paychecks and just like, we're going to be able to pay in a couple months. But right, right. Yeah. Good, so I'm thankful for that. One of the things that we caught a lot of footage of today is you're still heavily involved in all this. You know, from the beginning of starting it with the little bitty camera to now walking around with something that looks like a monstrosity, really picking up this thing in high quality HD. So, I mean, all day you're still working these events. So, I, I mean, What's kind of the trade-off for that? I know you got other people doing it now. You're, you're still doing this full-time. Do you edit full-time? Oh, I haven't edited for years. Like, if gotcha. there's something really urgent that needs to get out right away, we're on the road, we can't get the footage to the editors back home. Gotcha. Um, but we've got uh, two editors at home that, that edit the footage when we get back. Gotcha. So we, we do bring them on the road for drag week and race week. Gotcha. Um, but it's brutal for them. Like, they literally wake up in the morning, get some breakfast, edit for 16 hours, we get to the hotel, go to sleep, repeat. Yeah. But uh, yeah, when, when I first started, it was me shooting photos, video, editing, all together. Now we've got a team of nine people, including me. Gotcha. Doing merchandise or editing or photography. Gotcha. But uh, Fred and Matt helped film. Um, and they've been working their asses off this year because I raced a lot earlier in the year. Right, so right. So they picked up the slack, and I'm very grateful for that. I was able to have some fun, be competitive with the R8. Yeah. But now uh, I'm back to work, <laughs> and I'm focused exactly. on the work. and and have some fun, but it's still a passion of mine, so I, gotcha. I really enjoy getting to know the racers because we're a big a part of the event, and we love partying with the racers and, and enjoying their successes, their failures, just like documenting what it's like exactly. in the pits. Like it, it, we add to the experience, and we really love being a part of events like Street Cartier. Hey, we'll see y'all soon, man, Renegade Racing. I'm gonna stick some stickers on this trailer without him knowing about it, so <laughs> hey, follow us too, man. Thanks, Kyle, we'll hey, see you, brother. Yep. See you guys. Thanks, man, I appreciate it. Bam, baby! Bam!